everyone. As mentioned before, this is the recording for the midterm exam from previous year, which is 2018-2019. So I'm going to solve this with you. I hope that everything will be clear for you. So the first step is to start with changing the units. So to change that, you will go to 3D Max and then you will go to customize unit setup and change the unit to centimeters so i'll just make sure that yeah it is centimeters so you will change the display units to scale to centimeters and then the system unit setup as well to centimeters click on ok now all the units are done next you need to set the grid spacing to be 100 centimeters so to do that you will right click on uh, the uh, snap and then you go to home grid from here you will change it to 100 centimeters and then after you are done you need to make sure that here it says the grid is 100 if it's not 100 if you are zooming in or out this will change so if I zoom out more it will be 1000 so just keep in mind that the grid is 100 okay Keep that in mind and then you can work on that. So I will just click on Alt and W to maximize one of viewport and I will be working in this viewport. Next, for the walls, it says that you need to use AEC design elements to create three walls with the width of 20 cm and a height of 300 cm. The length of the walls is identified in figure one. So let's go to figure one which is sorry it is identified in figure two which is this one so as you can see here you have 500 by 700 so this is the dimension for the wood since they specified that you need to use aec design elements this means that we need to go to standard primitives and i will change that to aec extended and then i will select wood if it was specified that you need to do that, uh, if it was not specified, you don't need to use wall, then you can use box, you can use line, you can use any other method you want. So I will go to wall, change the width to 20, and then the height to 300. So I will type here 300. And then for the justification, you can select left, center, or right. I will select left, so when I click, let me just open the snap to grid points and close these and use snap to. Now we are able to use the grid. So because I selected left, when I click, it will be on the left side. So now I can get the dimension exactly as mentioned. Now each grid or each square is 100 centimeter. So I will go to 5. And then from here, I will select seven. So this is three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I will go down here. Now we have our walls ready. So if I click on Alt and scroll, and then move my mouse, you will see that we have the walls F3. And as you can see, the walls are ready. Next, use a box to create the floor slab and the thickness is 20 centimeters. So I will go here to standard primitives, box, make sure that snap is on, and then select vertex or endpoint. So now I don't need the grid, so I will close the grid as well. And then I will start from this point to this point to cover the whole area, including the wall. And then click anywhere, and then change the height to minus 20. Okay, now we have our flooring. Next, add a sliding window to the middle of the right wall to be similar to the one given next page. So just to make sure, we need to add a window in this wall, which is this one. And we have all the dimensions mentioned in here. So let me just keep this on a side so we can see it clearly. And I'll just do this, and then we can see the window. So to add a window, because this is um, uh, AEC wall design, the window will be added automatically to the wall itself. So I will go to the top of view, F3, 
and now we can start by adding the window from here. I will go to Windows and then select Sliding. After that, you can select which creation method you want. Do you want to click on the width, depth and height or width, height and depth? So this is up to you. Now I will select uh, width, depth and height and I will start from here. So the parameters given are the height is 130, width is 200 and depth is 20. So I will start by um, sorry, so I will start by clicking here. I will use a snap. Make sure that you're using snap. And then um, I will open the grid again because I need to select the grid points from here. And because I have a wall, I will not be able to select these grid points. So I will need to close these. And then I will start from here to here. I'm clicking and dragging. So this is the width and then click for the depth and then I will just click anywhere and then click for the height again click and drag click and then click anywhere for the height sorry for some reason this is appearing so again okay so as you can see now I have my window I will change the dimensions, so I will go to modify, by the way, as you can see, I close the snap, I'm always using S to open and close the snap whenever I don't need it. Okay, so the height is 130, the width is uh, 2 meters, so 200, and then the depth is 20, and then I will use a line to make sure, or you can use a snap because this is all one object, so I will use a snap. Um, let me use align, it's better. So align and x axis maximum to a maximum. Okay, so as you can see now, it is aligned and I have an opening for the wood. So let's just check. So the dimensions are correct. Let's see the height. The height of the window is showing in the section here. The height is 90. So right click on move and then in Z axis I'll just type 90. It is up now. Now in case the opening is not created in the wall, in case there is a wall in here, the opening is not created, this means that the window that you've created is not in the correct position or not aligned with the wall itself. So in this case, you need to link the window to the wall. How to do this? You need to have, of course, AEC wall and you need to have this window. And then you will click on select and link. Then click and drag the window to the wall and the opening will be created. This is only if the opening is not created. Now, as you can see, the opening is already done. We can continue with the next step. Okay. So we will just change all of these um, in the modify panel. So the frame is horizontal width is 5. And then vertical width is 5. Thickness is 3. Glazing is 1, and that's it. You don't need to change anything else. Now your window is ready. Next, we're going... Oh, sorry. There are other options in here. So, rail width is 1. Uh, panels are 3. And then... Vertical is 1. And then the cell height, we've already did that. Okay, so now we are done. Okay, perfect. Then add a sliding door. So I will go again, select the wall, T for top of view, F3, Z. And then I will go to doors and then select sliding. Again, I will open snap. Snap it anywhere, then you can move it. And then to here, since I don't have anything, I'll just click anywhere and then click anywhere for the height. Then I will go to modify change all the dimensions so as you can see the height is 220 i think there is something 
no, okay. So height is 220, and then width is 200, depth is 20, and then it's open 40%. 40%. Frame width is 10. Depth is 3. Now we have our door. As you can see. Now for the location of the door, let's just go here and make sure it is in the correct location. So I need 70 from the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to align it to this and then in the y-axis, minimum to minimum to make sure that it starts exactly with the door or with the wall and then right click on move and in y-axis I will type 70. So now I have exactly 70 centimeters. Okay, and it starts from the ground so we don't have any issues in this. Okay. After that, use box to create the ceiling of the room. Thickness is 20, so it is basically the same as the flooring. Let me just check. Yes, it is similar to the flooring. So I just select this, open a snap. This time I will make sure that I select vertex and endpoint. Remove the grid. And because we will move this box, we will copy it up, then we need to open snap 3 just to activate the z-axis. So shift, click on this, and then move it up, and then copy, click on OK, now we have a copy. Okay, so you can either do this or you can create another box, this is up to you. Add gypsum, uh, length 200 with 100, height, let me just make this a bit smaller, so we can see everything. Okay, middle of the room, on top of the dining table, the size of the smaller part of the gypsum on top is 180, width is 80, and then height is 10. Let's go to the images so we can see what's happening. So this is the section, as you can see, we have two boxes, and then you can see them in here as well. So let's create that. I'll go to the top to check the dimension. So what I can create another one, a new box, or what I'm going to do is click on Control and V to create a copy from this box. And then I will name this, for example, gypsum1. And then I will go and change the dimension. So the first one is 200 by 100 by 10. Okay, so align. And then in the Z axis, maximum to minimum. So as you can see, we have it in here. I'll just make sure in the plan, is it correct? Where is the plan? No, it's supposed to be the, up, the other way around. So I will just rotate this. Open angle snap first, or press on E, and then rotate this 90 degrees, because it's supposed to show this way. Okay. And then copy this one again, Control V. Copy, this time I will follow the second dimension, which is 180 by 80 by 10 as well. And then I will select the bigger box, which is this one, align to the smaller box in the z-axis maximum to minimum. So now we have the ceiling. Okay, we're done with all of this. Then draw the table identified below. Make sure that it includes the following top surface width 100, 206. Okay, let's just check the table from here. As you can see, we don't have any chamfer on the edges or anything. <coughs> so, so we can uh, start with that directly. So let's start with the top part. So for the top part, again, you can create a box, for instance. Okay, let me just highlight this so we know where we are. Okay, so first of all, I will start with the top surface. For the top surface, you can either create a box or I will just copy this again. So Control V, copy. This time, this is for table. And then I will change the width 100, 200. So it's basically the same dimension. The only difference is that the height is 6. 
okay and it's 70 centimeters higher than the floor so from here I will just type 70 now it is higher than the floor okay now we have this ready next is to create the legs of the table you must draw lines then extrude the lines by six centimeters and let's see this figure okay so this is the shape basically so we already know that the height is 70 let's check if there are any other dimensions okay so this is 100 but nothing is mentioned in this area okay so let's say it's 70 by 70 okay since this is 100 let's say this is 70 by 70 so i will go to the front of you and i will draw a um, rectangle and for this rectangle i will change the dimension to be 70 by 70. i think this is the front of view let's go to the left of view i will rotate this so this is basically to know the dimension i'm going to align it to this table an x axis center to center apply and y axis maximum to minimum okay so this is our rectangle i will just right click hide unselected so you can see it close the grid now you can see it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to draw these two lines okay the x part so you can do it in any way you prefer at the end we just need to make sure that all the dimensions are correct the center of the table itself so as you can see we have this shape so to create this I'm just going to go and create a line from the midpoint using snap I'll open midpoint and I'll just create this to get the middle of the uh, rectangle now I'm going to create another line from here to here and uh, what I'm going to do is I'll go to modify, click on one to open vertex and then move this, let's say minus um, three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and then um, I'll go here because I'm inside the line itself. So I'll go to uh, outline, let's say um, five and then I will use mirror copy and then mirror then i will use the snap to move this in here now you will notice that i have these lines so i will need to um to fix this and then i will click on vert uh, on uh, vertices select these vertices and go to well uh, sorry i will go to fuse it will not be welded because each of them are connected to other lines select this and then fuse and then as you can see now we have this shape now to make it all one shape i'm going to first of all attach this line now all of these are one line but they are separate sp lines so we have this one this one and this one so what we're going to do to do now is go to trim and start trimming all the extra lines so i will remove these lines remove this okay and then remove these lines now we have the whole shape by the way this is the line that we did for the middle part we don't need it anymore we can delete it now this is a one a one line but inside it you will find that we have different sp lines so what we're going to do is i will click on one to go to vertex and make sure to weld all the vertices so if you have two vertices on top of each other they will turn into one so i will weld it with 0.1 centimeters so any two vertices uh, with a spacing of 0.1 centimeters will be welded together now as you can see all the vertices are white except the first one or the last one is yellow this means that now the object is uh, there is one sp line only inside this line I'll use extrude and as mentioned in the quiz here or in the midterm here we need it to be six centimeters so I'll type six and then as you can see we have this shape unhide all 
top view and then I will place it. It's already in the middle of the uh, in the, of the middle of the table. So let's say I will keep it here. Let's see if there is any dimensions. Mm, nothing is mentioned. So I can do that depending on what I want. So I'll keep, uh, let's say I will align it here on the x-axis maximum to maximum. And then let's say minus um, 100. No. Minus 20. And then again, control V, copy, or instance, align it to the table in the x-axis minimum to minimum, and then I will move it 20. So this is for sure in the middle. Okay, so we're done with this part. Now let's go to the next part here, which is the lighting. Okay, the lighting feature, the space between the light and um, the table should be 80 centimeters and they could add a cord wire okay so let's start with the shape itself now as you can see this is the shape that we have so we're going to create this from the front of you and then we're going to adjust all the dimensions and everything but uh, before we do that let's just check if there is any dimensions in here for the light no, nothing is mentioned. Okay, so we only have the lighting. No dimensions are mentioned in here. Nothing in the question itself. No, only the spacing between the light and the table. And this, we're going to do it later on. So, uh, let's start by creating the light. I'll just zoom in on it so we can see it. Okay, so I will start with the line. And make sure that you have corner and you have smooth or busier for the drag type. And then you can start by drawing. So I will start like this. Shift and drag to create a small curve. And then shift and drag. And then click only to create a corner. And then click and drag for this curve. We'll go down a little bit and then click and drag, click and drag, and then, sorry, click and drag, and then this is the shape that we need. Okay, so basically this is the shape. It's supposed to be a little bit similar. If you need to fix anything, of course, you will go to one and start moving around everything. Because you have a corner here, I just need to make sure there is no overlining or anything, everything is fine. Now we're going to use the modifier, which is lathe. Click on lathe, move the axis to be here. So now we have this shape for the light. If you need to fix anything, you can always go to the line, click here to show end result so you can see the lathe, and start fixing any issues you have. So maybe I will make this longer. I will select these and bring them all down. Maybe this as well. And I think I'm going to need to fix this a little bit. Maybe for this one, I'm going to make the hand a little bit bigger. And then maybe for these two, I'll just make it a little bit. Anyways, you can take your time depending on how much time is left on your exam. Now I have this shape, it's ready. I'll just make sure that it is 80 centimeters higher than the table. So align it to the top of the table. Uh, here it will be the Y axis, minimum to maximum. And then in the move, I will type 80. Now it's above the table with 80 centimeters. Then we need to create the um, the cord. So let's just go to the question again. Okay, so we are here. Create the lighting feature. The spacing is 80. Okay, add the cord wire to the lighting accordingly to be similar to figure. Oh, okay, so there are no, uh, no dimensions or anything. 
So we'll just do that. I will select this, go to the top of view, and create a cylinder for the cord from here to here. And then I will go to the front of view for the height. Okay, we cannot do anything from here. So I'll just move it up, align it to this and the z-axis minimum to maximum. Sorry, in the y-axis in this case, apply. In x and z, it's supposed to be in the center. And then from here, I'll just make it a little bit smaller. So let's see, 0.2. And then I will change the height until we reach the ceiling. So let's say it's 95, okay, and we have our cord. Now one more thing, uh, you will see that the lighting is this way because there is no thickness, so we will need to add shell modifier. So whenever you're using any modifier that works with line, like Lee, you will need to use shell modifier. So I'll keep the outer amount as zero, and then I will increase the inner amount a little bit. Let's just see. I'll go to lathe as well and increase the segments so it's curved light and then you can increase the thickness okay so in this case I will need the outer amount actually okay so this is enough now we have our lighting select them group okay and you can name it by the way light and then align in the y-axis center to center we have four copies i think yes four copies so i'll just move it here shift create instance three copies so the total is four select all of them group okay and then align them to the table in the x-axis center to center so now they are in the correct position Okay, we're done with this part. Next, model the chair using any method makes to make it look similar to the figures. Please note that the top part of the legs is a square with a size of six by six, while the bottom part is a square with a size of four by four. The width of the chair is forty-eight centimeter. All other me measurements are mentioned, and you need to create five copies. Okay. So let's go to the dimensions that we already have. So these are the dimensions. And um, what you need to do is you need to check the drawing that you have here. So if I go here and zoom in, as you can see, we have chamfer for all the edges. We have this shape with an opening in here and we have this. Let's go to the 3D so you can see it better. Okay, so it clearly shows that this is one object. So you will create this object first. And then we have this object which is the seating area. It is a separate part. Okay, and then we have the legs. So let's create these shapes. So the dimension here is 47 and it's mentioned that the width is 48. So I go to the front of you and I will start drawing somewhere outside and then we will move it inside. So I'll just draw a rectangle. This rectangle is 48, no, 47 by 48. Okay, so this is the rectangle. This is the basic shape for this chair. Let's go to the 3D, so it is, okay. So we have this chamfer from here, from the other side. Let's see the dimensions, are they mentioned? Uh, no, okay, so we can do this depending on what we need. So what I'm going to do uh, here, I will draw this part inside. So I will use another rectangle. Um, for this rectangle, let's say I'll make it, um, or let's just copy this one, which would be faster. So, Control V, 
copy. I will remove three from here. So five and five from each side, or let's make it even two. So 10 and 10 from each side. And then for this one, I'll just remove 10 and I will, no, this will be 20. This would be 30, and then I will move it down minus 5 and the y axis. Okay, so basically, what I did is I'm keeping all the sides the same, but now when I'm looking at this drawing, as you can see, the spacing at the top is more. So again, I'll just make it 20, move it down again. So basically, you need to have these two rectangles as a guide. Then I will go to editable SP line attach and attach the other one then i will go to two and select the small line for the small rectangle and delete it then for this one i will go to trim so i will click on three to activate the spin line and trim this part one select all the vertices and weld basically we needed to weld this point and these vertices now this is all one SP line. So you can extrude it. And as mentioned in the dimension, it's supposed to be 10 centimeters. Now to create the curves from here, from here, from here, and from here, we're going to need, and also from the inside, we're going to go back to the vertices, select all of these, and let's just check the 3D one more time. Yes. Okay, plus these two. And we're going to go to chamfer. And you can increase the chamfer, sorry, not chamfer fillet. And increase it according to how much you want. So this is enough. And then I will close this and then you have your extrusion as you can see but then again we need the fillet on these parts so you can just add a chamfer modifier and then increase the amount depending on how much you want let me just click on F4 so you can see the lines and you can increase the segments Okay, so let's say I'll keep the amount as 1. Now if I click on F4, you will see that this is chamfered from all sides. Okay. Now if I go to the uh, dimensions, you will see that this is 110 degrees. So this is already 90 degrees. I will go to rotate in the x-axis. And instead of 90, I'll make it 110. So now this is correct. Now we need to create the base. Let's just check the top of view. As you can see, it is a rectangle. So uh, it's 48 by 42. So I'm just going to create a rectangle or a box. Again, this is up to you. I'll just go and create a chamfered box. This is the easiest way. So chamfered box. Click, click anywhere. And then create the dimensions from here. So this is supposed to be, you know, 42. And then this is supposed to be 48, the height is 10, and then for the fillet, I'm going to use the same thing I used for this one, which is 1. Okay, now you just need to align everything together. So, align this in the x-axis center to center, and the y-axis minimum to minimum, so it will be this way. Click on apply. And in the Z axis, or in the Y axis, I'm not going to be able to use minimum to minimum because the minimum is with this curve. So I can do what I can do is I can change the rotation to be 
90. No, it will not fix anything. Anyways, I can just move this in the Y axis and keep it wherever I need it. Okay. Now I will select both of them and change it to the same color. So they appear as one object. By the way, uh, this is done now. Now we can start with the legs. Now for the legs, as mentioned in the question, uh, the bottom of the leg is four and then the top is six. So you have multiple methods of doing this. So you can either start with a normal box. So this is the first method. You will start with a normal box and let's change the dimension to four by four. And then the height is 37. Okay, and then you can go to Edit Poly, or you can add a 50 also, this is up to you. And then you can start making this box bigger. So this is 4, we need it to be 6, which means I need it to be bigger from all sides by 1. So I can go to this part, the polygon, and then I can use Outline, and I will outline it with 1 cm. Okay, so now this is correct. So this is the first method. The second method is to create loft. Now, it depends on which method you remember actually, but all of them are correct. If you remember the first one, it will be easier for you. So I'll create this. Shift and create and, and, and copy. And then I will keep this as six by six and then I will go and create a line this line is supposed to be 37 um, unfortunately I cannot um, I cannot take any dimensions when I'm drawing the line so I will click on this vertex and then align it to this vertex and the y-axis to go to the minimum and then in y-axis I will move it 37 so now I'm sure that this is 37. Then I'm going to use loft. So I'll go to uh, compound objects, loft, get shape, and I will start with this one. And then I will go to the end of the path, which is 100%. And then get shape, and I will use this one. So now you have the exact dimension. Now both methods are correct. There are other methods. You can use taper, you can use uh, FFD modifier, you can use the scale for the top, but I prefer the first method which is easier and faster for you to do. Okay, so now we're just going to place them. You can use snap. For now, just to not waste your time, I'm just going to place this here. And then what I'm going to do to make sure that it is in the exact same position from all sides, I will use symmetry. I will add symmetry modifier. Okay, and then I will make sure that I'm using the y-axis. Click on symmetry to open the mirror and then align it and the y-axis to the center okay so now it's exactly in the center we will move it to the top it's okay and then i will add another symmetry for these two okay so this is a symmetry modifier so at the end there will be one object and instead of z-axis this time i will use x-axis and again i will use the center of this make sure to flip it so it shows on both sides. Now this is correct. And now I'm going to align it to the seating part and the z-axis maximum to minimum. Now they are in the correct position. So I'll just select all of them, group them and name them as chair, and then go to the top of view, F3, move it and create the copies according to what's mentioned so let's say i'll keep one copy here 
shift, sorry, shift in X axis, instance, select all of them, go to mirror, and Y axis, instance, and move it to here. And then I will select one, shift and rotate, 90 degrees, instance, move this here, and then shift and rotate, sorry. Rotate from the z-axis 180, or you can use mirror again. This is up to you. And I'll just move it here. Now, as you can see, everything is correct. The only thing is the height of the chair. It's above the ground, so I'll select all of them, align them to the flooring, minimum to maximum. And now we have our... Let's just make sure everything is fine, yes. So I'll just save at the end and you will submit. So that's it. I hope everything is clear. If anything is not clear, please let me know and I will be happy to explain it again. Thank you for watching and good luck in your midterm.